Today, I'm going to show you how to use libraries in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is going to be so great. It's a new feature within Photoshop called Libraries. They introduced it in the past couple of versions. So if you guys are using the Creative Cloud version of Photoshop, you're good to go. You have access to Libraries. Now, this is something I was actually in Adobe, like in San Francisco last week at Adobe's headquarters. We did an awesome live broadcast with some great folks at Adobe, and they taught me a lot about Photoshop. And one of the big things that stuck out was Libraries. I was like, I haven't been using these pretty much at all, but after like getting a lesson from the folks at Adobe, I was like, okay, this is actually like a really big helpful thing. So today I'm going to show you how to use libraries in Photoshop. Basically, they're a way to store assets on the cloud. So you can create a document, store all those assets on the cloud, and then get to them from whatever computer you wind up on. So as long as you're signed in with the Creative Cloud. You can also share those assets with other people. Let's say you're doing like a logo design and you want to share that PSD and the fonts and the images and typefaces and colors, things like that. You can share all that with another person. They can work on it, add more to the library, and then share it back with you as well. So libraries are insanely helpful. And in today's episode, we're going to show you a quick example of how I would use them by creating a little wine label. All right, guys, we got a great episode. Let's jump into Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. We've got a blank page in front of us. Now let's go ahead and start off by creating a new document. So I'm going to go to File and down to New. All right, and then we're just going to create a square here. So I'm going to create a 1500 by 1500 square with a white background. So this is going to be, let's hit OK. This is going to be our working document. Now I'm going to hit F for full screen. I really, I like uh, my documents to be full screen. And I'm going to right click on my background color. Let's just change that to a medium gray. There we go. OK, so now basically we're going to create everything we need to uh, work on here using our libraries. So to start off, we're going to go to Window and down to Libraries. OK, now here in the libraries, I'm just going to show you around the library panel real quick so you get an idea of what it's actually like and, and what you're going to be learning. OK, so by default, you have My Library. OK, here, if you click here, you're going to have a few different libraries. Now, in this case, I've created a library called patterns, which I've made a couple patterns. We released a great episode on using Adobe Capture to create patterns. If you guys are interested in using Adobe Capture to make patterns, uh, just click on your screen right now. We'll put a little annotation right there to send you that other episode. OK, so patterns. And then we have some downloads here from, uh, from Adobe here as well. This is an uh, image that I used to create an episode. Now, in this case, these are all of our different libraries. Now, you can create new libraries here as well. And basically, think of these as like a project by project basis. So in this case, we're going to create a library that's specific to the project we're about to work on. But you could also create a project, uh, a library, for instance, uh, Flurn, right? If, if I wanted to have like my logo in that library, as well as the typefaces, as well as like acceptable colors, and maybe some images for backgrounds for like ads for the web and things like that, you could put all that together as well. So like if anyone needed to work on anything related to your brand, you could send them that library and they would have all their assets right there and including all the typefaces and character styles and things like that. So um, what we're going to do, let's go ahead and start off by creating a new library. So we're going to click here on our menu item. OK, and I'm going to go down to create a new library and we're going to call this Forester. There we go. Create and I'm pretending that I was hired by like a wine company to create an ad. So we're we're starting off with our Forester. So here we have a few options. Again, you can choose your library here at the top. We have a couple different views for our library. Here on the side, we've got our options for creating like a new library. We can create a new library from a current document, and you can collaborate, share, rename, and delete all that sort of thing. Even view this exact library on the website. OK, now you can drag and drop assets here. And then here on the very bottom, we've got a couple of options here. We've got a new library from a document. OK, we've got a, an add graphic library. We'll show you how to do that. Uh, we've got font, add layer style, and add foreground color. OK, so we're going to use pretty much all of those. All right, 
Well, the other cool thing that I really like about libraries is you can actually search Adobe stock uh, within Photoshop using the library. So let's go ahead and start off with that. I'm just going to type in tree here because I, uh, the folks at the Forrester Wine Company, which is made up, obviously, um, said, oh, we want a tree in our logo. Um, so here we go. We're searching trees. Now, this is what we're going to, this looks cool. This is like, okay, that could possibly make a cool wine logo. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to click here on this icon. It says save preview to Forrester. So we're going to go ahead and click on there. Okay. So here in my Forrester library, now we have a graphic, okay, that's actually you can see it's an Adobe Illustrator graphic. So this is a vector graphic. We, we can make this as large or as small as we want. OK, let's just click here and drag it onto my document. OK, it's going to tell you it's going to create a smart object. Let's hit OK there. And let's go ahead and make this a little bit larger. So I want this to pretty much fill my document here. All right, there we go. And we'll bring it right down to about there. OK, so you can see here within Forrester, uh, this is our library that we're creating. This is our first graphic. OK, so we've got our graphic in place. Now you can see it has the Adobe stock uh, watermark on there, which is this is actually cool because you can work with stock images with their watermark on there. OK, so if I wanted to work on this, I can do this. And you can purchase them directly from the app and they auto update. We're going to show you how to do that in just a little bit. All right, guys, let's get back and jump into our logo. All right, so let's say that this is the label that we're going to be going with. This is going to be the body of the label. And I'm going to also use this to create colors for the brand. In other words, if you want to do like marketing or ad stuff, use these colors. These are the brand colors. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab my eyedropper here, OK? And we're just going to choose our foreground color here. So we can choose our foreground color of the tree. And then I just go right here I'm in my libraries and click on Add Foreground Color, OK? And it adds that color into our library. OK, I can click here on this uh, green back there. OK, add that. I'm going to click here on the lighter green. I'm going to add that. And we're going to click here on the darker green as well. OK, so those are the brand colors. If you want it to be dark, make sure it's that color. If you want it to be light, make sure it's that color. OK, now here you can go ahead and rename these if you want. So you can double click right there. And we can just call this a uh, background. In other words, like, OK, if you're going to be creating a background, make sure it's that color. So again, this can be for you, and it can be for anyone else who's going to be working on these documents. OK, now the next thing we're going to do is a little bit of type work. So I'm going to hit T for my type tool. OK, let's go ahead and open up our character pan panel. And we're just going to type in Forrester. All right, there we go. So Forrester. Now, I don't really like that typeface for this design. Uh, so what we're going to do, I've actually already decided, we're going to change this to copper plate. OK, there we go. We're going to change it to copper plate, medium. There we go, copper plate, regular. And I'm going to change my uh, width spacing here to 75. There we go, just kind of spread it out there. And the other thing that I want to do is I want to change my color here to the same color as the tree. Now, in this case, we've already registered the tree color here in my colors. So this is so cool because if you're clicked on any typeface, all you have to do is click on a color within your library, and it's going to automatically change it to that color. OK, so you don't have to open up your character panel and click here and then go uh, sample something and all that stuff. You can just do it right from, right from here. OK, so that looks pretty good. So Forrester, OK, and then I'm going to just duplicate this. So we're going to click and drag this down. OK, we're going to duplicate this. And I'm going to just say Sonoma here. OK, it's our uh, made up wine brand is in, is in the Sonoma Valley. OK, and this one, I want to be this color. So we'll just click on there. And we'll go ahead and open up our character panel. Let's go ahead and bring our spacing down a little bit and make our, there we go, and make our text a little bit smaller. All right, cool. So that looks good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that these are aligned. So I'm going to shift click the two of my text layers here. OK, we're going to go ahead and align them vertically. So they're, you know, you can do left, right. OK, so we just want to align them vertically there. And then I'm going to also want them aligned to my whole document. So I'm going to hit Control or Command G to group them together. OK, then we're going to select everything using Control or Command A. And then using my Move tool, I've got my alignment options here. I'm just going to click here at the top. So again, you could 
do the right side of your document, the left side and the middle. Okay, so I group them together, meaning they both act as one. Okay, so now that we have some type in our image, we can add these to our libraries as well. And the cool part about this, it's going to add the type, but it's also going to add the exact style of the type as well. So we'll show you how that works. All right, so jumping back in here, we're going to go ahead and click on, this is our uh, title here, right? So this is Forrester. This is going to be our title. So I'm going to click here and add my title. So you can see it's going in as character styles. Now it, it says exactly what it is. It's the font. This is the size. This is, you know, the letting and the tracking. Those are all automatically added in there as well. Okay. Now let's click on Sonoma and we're going to go ahead and add that as well. Okay. So we have a couple character styles. Now in this case, I want to rename this one because right now it doesn't tell me a lot. I'm just going to double click on here and rename this title because that, that's the title. You can see this color is the same color. Okay. And then let's click here and we're just going to double click and I'm going to just call this sub title. Okay. Now check this out. This is real cool. If I just delete those two text layers, right? And then I'm like, okay, working with blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm just working in Photoshop and it's like, all right, time to get back to my Forrester brand. So I'm like, you know, hand, handcrafted in, um, California or whatever, right? So I'm like, okay, well, I need to match my brand. I need to get back to like, uh, you know, the, the brand specifics. And, you know, I don't remember all the settings. What was the name of the font? How, what was the spacing? What was the sizing? I don't remember all that stuff. Not a big deal because here it is in our uh, actual library. So all I have to do is I'm on my type. I just have to click right there and it automatically changes it, changes it to that exact character style. Okay. So again, I can just duplicate this. Let's just duplicate that and we'll just call this one. We'll just F O R R E S T R. This will be Forrester. Okay. And this is like a title. So I just click here on title and boom, it changes it to that exact size and color and font and all of your settings for you. So again, all we have to do here is just align the two together. Let's bring uh, Forrester down a little bit. There we go. And in this entire group, we're going to go ahead and align this vertically as well. Okay. Now this is really cool guys. So we have our colors registered from our document. Okay. We have our graphic registered from our document. We have our character style. So anytime I'm working on anything for this brand, I know exactly what my typefaces are as well as my colors and uh, my logo and things like that. Now what we can also do, see, I've got this Forrester handcrafted in California. We can also add this graphic to our uh, library here for Forrester. So I'm going to click here to add that graphic. And what it does is it actually adds this group one. So let's say if I just delete group one here, okay, I can just, I have this as my library. Okay. So this is available on any computer that I'm signed in uh, with my Adobe Creative Cloud. And we can also share this out on the internet. So uh, this group, I can just click and drag this whole group right there. And boom, we've got a smart object from the cloud that's like, okay, anytime you need that, just bonk, <laughs> ready to go. Or if you want to recreate it, you can just type whatever you want and then click on these different character styles. Okay. So really, really cool there. All right. So you can see already the power of libraries is like, whoa, this is actually really, really cool. And we've got even more things to go over. Let's jump back in and show you the rest of the features within libraries. So jumping back into Photoshop, I think this is my favorite thing about the libraries. So we've created our label here and let's say our subject or client is like really happy with this. They're like, yeah, that looks great. We're our winery is going to be the best. Um, and you're like, okay, well, this is an Adobe stock. Uh, you know, it, it's got the little watermark here right now. So I, you know, instead of like going to their website and purchasing it and plugging it back in and all that stuff, all you do is just click here on the actual stock. And this is going to be so helpful with uh, composites. Just right click here and you just go to license image. Okay. You just go to license your image. It's going to just take a little while to think it's going to use one of my license. So I'll say, okay, there we go. And we're watching it here in live time. It's resyncing itself. Okay. It's downloading it. And then boom, did you see that it auto updated here in our document. Now, no longer are we working with the watermarked version of that file. 
we're working with the original high definition Illustrator version of that file. Not only that, but it's in the exact same size and place, which is just really, really cool. So you can try out a bunch of different assets from Adobe Stock. When you finally find the right one that fits into your image or composite, whatever you're doing, you just purchase it right from here and it auto updates. So you don't have to, you don't have to do anything over again. It, it saves a ton of time. Okay, so now we have our Forester, and this is like, yeah, it's like totally okay, right? Like, if I saw that on a wine bottle, I'd be like, okay, they, <laughs> they hired a mediocre graphic designer to do that. <laughs> so, here we have our document. Now, we can go ahead and save out this library. It's, all, it's actually already saved, but we can share this out as well. So, we could rename it, delete it, whatever. We can view it on the website. So, let's go ahead and click on View on Website, okay? It's going to open up Adobe Creative Cloud here, so you can actually view this on the website. So if you wanted to just pull this um, from you know any computer in the world, you can do that there. Okay, you can also go right here in uh, the library panel. You can go to uh, Collaborate, which is really cool. It's going to open up a web page here, so you can collaborate. So it brings it up and asks who who do you want to actually edit this so in this case uh, let's say you're working on a small design team or you know a, a couple people were going to work on this file then you can just type their email addresses have whether they can just view it so like a client you might just want to view this and they don't need adobe creative cloud to view it by the way um, or edit so if you want them to actually be able to edit it you can have that there as well and then they can work on it and then just save it and it'll automatically update here within uh, the document. So you can get an entire document there as well. And last, we're gonna show you how you can create a share link. So again, it's going to bring up this library. Now it's not just this document in here, right? It's not just this, it's, it's the library of everything that actually makes it as well, okay? And we're gonna hit uh, create a public link. There we go, so you can create a public link and you can send this to anyone in the world. So it's a, it's a read-only version of this library. There we go. Cool, and you can send this link out. Now, if you wanted to do something like a snapshot of the entire logo, uh, really easy to do. You could simply create a new layer and go to like image and down to apply image, okay, which just creates a snapshot of everything you see. So you can see now we have just this. And then you just add that as a graphic as well. So they can see the finished uh, logo there as well within the libraries. So you can see this is a very, very helpful tool within Photoshop. And the last thing I'm going to show you is how to take your entire PSD and put that in the library as well. So someone can actually go in and edit this PSD really easily. So to do your entire PSD, basically remember we have our group one here, which is our text here. We have our background. To do your entire PSD, which is like, you know, here they'd be able to uh, go in and move your uh, f files and stuff like that. All right, just simply click on all the layers in your PSD. So if I created a new layer here and I just, you know, did something like that to ruin it, uh, just shift click on all of the layers there and then add those as a graphic. There we go. And you're going to see it's a Photoshop document. So if I now wanted to bring that back in, I can do that. Okay, we can bring that back in as just a graphic. But let's say I want to get rid of this thing, just simply double click here. Okay, hit OK. And then you can delete this little layer there and then hit Control or Command S to save it. And it's going to automatically update here on this document. So you can just put an entire PSD as a library element as well. And again, it all automatically syncs with the cloud in real time. All right, guys, so that's how you use libraries within Photoshop. If you want to start using libraries, just follow these key steps. Start off by creating a new document within Photoshop, then go to Window and down to Libraries. You can use an existing library or create a new library. Use that menu feature on the top right of the Libraries panel. Within Libraries, you can search Adobe Stock. In this case, we just typed in Tree right there, and we were able to sync the preview to our Creative Cloud. Now, when we were finished working on our document, simply right click on that asset and go to License Image. It'll automatically license it and update it within your image. To add colors to your library, simply use your eyedropper tool, select the color, and then click the Add Foreground Color on the bottom of the Libraries panel. Now, in this case, we just selected like the tree in the background and we added all those colors. So if I need to go back and work on this brand, I have the exact right colors for the brand. Adding character styles is also really helpful. Basically, you can create like a title and a subtitle using the exact font, spacing, sizing, and even color that you want. 
and then add those character styles. Then whatever you type in Photoshop, simply click on that character style and it will convert it automatically to that exact character style. This is really great for working with brands. And to add a graphic to your library or a group of graphics or your entire Photoshop document, simply select those layers and then go to the add graphic icon. It'll add it into the cloud. And if you wanna edit it, you can simply drag it into your document and double click on it where you can edit the original document. And that's how I use libraries in Photoshop, guys. I hope this episode helped out. I learned a ton from the folks at Adobe last week and I'm like, okay, libraries are really awesome. I'm gonna to totally start using them and integrating them directly into my workflow. If you love Photoshop and photography as much as I do, go ahead and click on your screen right about now. We'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for an episode or a question, comment about today's episode, leave it in a comment box right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. I'll floor you later. Bye, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. In Photoshop. Bum, 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 bum. Jumping into Photoshop. Double thumbs up. <laughs>